even though as much as 20% of the population has thyroid antibodies, only about 0.3% actually become hypothyroid. And this is good. This is empowering. This tells us that even if you did have the thyroglobulin correlated with the TPO and diagnosed Hashimoto's, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to become hypothyroid. What are thyroglobulin antibodies? Hi, this is Dr. Michael Ruscio, and let's detail thyroglobulin, what are thyroglobulin antibodies, and what it means when you have an antibody test positive. This is something I've changed my mind on, so I'm excited to share with you how we can appropriately look at this antibody marker, use it to improve your health, but also be careful not to misuse this lab test. So let's start with what is thyroglobulin. And definitionally, it's a mouthful, but thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein that resides in the follicular membrane of the thyroid. Now, this sounds like a mouthful, but let's break it down. Here is your thyroid gland. And as you'll see, the thyroid has a number of follicles, almost like grapes, these round entities, these follicles are where thyroid hormone is stored. And as you'll see here, inside the follicle is this lumen. And again, this is where the grape juice of the thyroid gland is stored or the thyroid hormone. And the follicles in the membrane, you have these components that can work to use nutrition and fuse from that thyroid hormone. And this is where thyroglobulin works along with thyroid peroxidase. And this schematic is helpful to visualize what's happening. So thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase, they take tyrosine, the amino acid tyrosine, and they combine it with iodine. And through a few steps, you end up with tetraiodothyronine. This is T4. Tetraiodo 4 iodine, as you can see depicted here and the tyrosine becomes a tyrosine backbone, and you have thyronine, tetraiodothyronine. So thyroglobulin works along with thyroid peroxidase to create thyroid hormone, mainly T4, a small amount of T3 is also released, um, in the partnership or via the utilization of iodine and tyrosine. So this is thyroglobulin and what it does. Now, probably somewhat obvious, but when you have antibodies against thyroglobulin, the immune system is attacking that tissue. This is where we can get a little bit more swept into speculation or confusion. And I'm excited to share with you what I think the appropriate way of interpreting a positive thyroglobulin antibody is, at least mainly in the context of thyroid autoimmunity, Hashimoto's, or Graves. But before we go there, I'm curious to hear in the comments, have you had this marker tested? Was it positive? If it was positive, what were you told? Okay, so thyroglobulin testing. As it pertains to autoimmunity, a positive thyroglobulin is not diagnostic alone in and of itself for Hashimoto's or for Graves. And so having a follow-up study of or a correlation study with TPO for Hashimoto's plus ultrasound or thyroid receptor antibody for Graves plus ultrasound. And the ultrasound gives you a visual representation of what the thyroid tissue actually looks like. As I mentioned a moment ago, correctly interpreting this marker is important. And as I've listed out for you here, there's a few other instances in which you'll see elevations of thyroglobulin. One is in healthy individuals. And I'll share a quote with you in a moment that helps to support this, but estimates range from anywhere to 20 to really the mid 30s percent of individuals who are healthy and normal may have elevations of thyroglobulin. So you can see elevations in an otherwise normal individual. You can also see this in nodules, but remember that 95% of nodules are benign and in goiter and in thyroid cancer. Now regarding cancer, just a quick aside, 2019 CDC data found a occurrence rate of 13 cases of thyroid cancer in 100,000 individuals. 
So it's well under 1%. Now, it's not just poo-poo and say, if your oncologist is wanting you to, to do this study, ignore it. But it is to help contextualize. Let's say you've had a thyroid panel screening for thyroid autoimmunity. The only marker positive was thyroglobulin. Then you want to be a little bit bridled with how quickly you're jumping to a diagnostic conclusion, whether it be for autoimmunity or for cancer. Again, always speak with your doctor about these things, but just to make sure that you don't misattribute your level of risk. And here's kind of your breakdown in terms of if you had this marker, positive or negative, what do you do? And I've tried to spell this out as, as plainly as I can. A negative thyroglobulin is not um, diagnostic, nor is a positive. A negative thyroglobulin can partially rule out. A positive thyroglobulin, like I said a moment ago, has to be correlated with TPO to diagnose Hashimoto's and with thyroid receptor antibody diagnosed Graves, plus or minus ultrasound. And this is probably the most accurate way of using these. Although you do see debate in the literature, I feel this is the most prudent way to use these markers. And again, remember, this is because elevations can occur in healthy, in nodule, in goiter, and in cancer. And here's this first evidence point I wanted to share on thyroglobulins. To quote, on the contrary, a positive antibody for thyroglobulin is not diagnostic of Hashimoto's because thyroglobulin antibodies are found in numerous other conditions. They are present in approximately 50% of Graves' disease, 20% of non-toxic goiter, and thyroid cancer cases, and also in normal individuals, especially older females. The titer of thyroglobulin antibodies does not usually correlate with degree of thyroid dysfunction. This is why we want to use this marker as part of a larger diagnostic approach and not come to a firm diagnostic conclusion, especially for thyroid autoimmunity, based upon thyroglobulin alone. And here are two more data points that support this. The reason why I share a few different data points is in any body of literature, you're going to be able to find a couple outliers. But what the totality of the evidence supports is really what we should be looking to as the truth. So the NHANES data set, I'm not sure if this is what NHANES this was, but this sample from the NHANES was of over 16,000 individuals, and they found no significant association between thyroglobulin antibody levels and hypothyroid. And continuing from Frontiers in Immunology to quote, the functional consequence of anti-thyroglobulin antibodies is not clear as they do not cause thyroid cell destruction. These data points are why there is caution recommended regarding the interpretation of a thyroglobulin antibody alone. And this might be the most compelling data point that I've seen on why we want to be careful with how much diagnostic weight we assign to thyroglobulin antibodies. In this study, 223 adults who were previously diagnosed with Hashimoto's were examined for a correlation between ultrasound findings and the thyroid antibody findings. Now, if the antibodies are accurate, we should see correlation between the antibodies and the ultrasound. Now, one can argue, well, antibodies may elevate before the ultrasound elevate or changes. And there may be some truth to that, but I think it misses the bigger point, which is if we look at enough people, we will see people at different time points in their course of the antibodies being positive. And at least according to my inference, with a large enough sample size, and I've showed you multiple now, we should either see a correlation or not. And that sort of predictive antibody hypothesis doesn't seem to uh, hold weight if we have a sample size that's large enough. And remember, the NHANES data was over 16,000 individuals. But here, in this study, they're looking for a correlation between, again, ultrasound and antibodies. Now, the TPO antibodies correlated with ultrasound, but the thyroglobulin antibodies did not correlate with ultrasound. And what you're seeing here is essentially a quote. Now, it's a little bit wordy, but let me break it down. The hypo echogenicity, right, or hypoechoic echogenicity. This means that there's not enough reverberation or echo in the thyroid gland. Remember all those follicles? Those follicles should have a, a fair amount of echo. And so there should be what's known as isoechoic or the appropriate amount of density 
as discovered by the ultrasound. Now, hypoechoic means that there's been some damage from these antibodies and therefore inflammation or scar tissue, and that has a denser finding or, or, or a denser sort of resonance. So the low level of echo was associated with TPO. However, thyroglobulin levels did not show any differences, and there were no significant correlations between sonographic variables and thyroglobulin levels. And here is the visual representation of that. This is a normal thyroid ultrasound. This is a aberrant or a Hashimoto's ultrasound. And what you're seeing is isoechoic, meaning it's your appropriate level of echo, meaning the tissue is not overly dense, and you're seeing homogeneity. It's similar, right? So isoechoic homogeneity of the gland, this correlates with TPO, not with thyroglobulin. And here what you're seeing is this hypoechoic. You're seeing these, these pockets of density. As you can clearly see, the tissue is not all the same. Picture that you were rubbing your bicep. You shouldn't feel bumps, lumps, or hard spots in there. The tissue should all have a consistent feel to it. That's what you should be having in your thyroid gland. So in this aberrant ultrasound finding image that you're seeing, the thyroglobulin antibodies were normal. So here they're normal when the tissue is being damaged and they're also normal here, right? So normal thyroglobulin, normal thyroglobulin, normal TPO, abnormal TPO. So this is exactly why the numerous papers that we covered are essentially recommending caution in spelling out that thyroglobulin in and of itself is not diagnostic. And this, this study I thought was a really wonderful visual portrayal of that. Let's go to the devil's advocate position. You know, can you make a case for thyroglobulin antibodies? Perhaps. There are some data that have shown that when someone is treated and they improve, there's a correlation between the thyroglobulin antibodies and how they feel. But I would really recommend caution here. And the reason for that is because, at least in my clinical experience, there doesn't seem to be a high degree of correlation between antibodies and how one is feeling, specifically for the thyroid. Yes, there are a handful of things that we can do to improve antibodies that are diet, lifestyle, and nutritionally focused, yes. But if you've done the low-hanging fruit interventions, improving your diet, vitamin D, selenium, let's say, and your antibodies are no longer improving or haven't improved at all, then this is where we want to be careful not to treat the numbers at the exclusion of the individual. And Robert Abbott, Dr. Robert Abbott published a great study wherein he had individuals go on the autoimmune paleo diet, a very restrictive diet protocol that removes all grains, eggs, nuts, seeds, and nightshade vegetables. So it's very restrictive. And individuals felt better on the diet and their body composition also improved, but their antibodies didn't change. And beyond that, today we've published two papers, the first one a case series in Integrative Medicine and Clinician's Journal, where we really tried to spell out and help people better understand that yes, the antibodies have a time and a place, but it's very easy to slip into this scenario where you treat the numbers at the exclusion of the patient. And what we are trying to outline here is oftentimes the health of their gut is overlooked. And that's what we try to detail a bit further in this follow-up paper we published in the journal Nutrients. And all of this is sort of come back and, and wrap to the point of the antibodies for thyroglobulin, like we mentioned, are not diagnostic in and of themselves. They need to be correlated with a greater clinical picture. Remember that with predicting hypothyroidism by doing these antibody tests, it's not a black or white, yes or no, all or none phenomenon. We want to be looking at risk and understanding where are you on the spectrum of risk. And this is helpful because when everything is viewed in black and white, people get recommendations like you can never again eat gluten or you will become hypothyroid or you must be on this supplement for your entire life, whatever it may be. Things can be left out 
like the fact that even though as much as 20% of the population has thyroid antibodies, only about 0.3% actually become hypothyroid. And this is good. This is empowering. This tells us that even if you did have the thyroglobulin correlated with the TPO and diagnosed Hashimoto's, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to become hypothyroid. And actually, the data are in your favor that you likely won't be. Yes, we still want to intervene and make you as healthy as possible. But no, we don't want to force someone to, let's say, be strictly gluten-free forever, even if they don't notice any benefit from going gluten-free, which unfortunately happens um, quite often, at least as I've seen in the clinic. As a uh, request from me, if this has been helpful, please share. These ideas really do need your help and support to reach more people. And it is disheartening to see the number of patients that come into the clinic and have been given a very sort of fearful narrative on their thyroid health. We want to improve one's health. Yes, we don't want to use fear or sort of dogmatic recommendations regarding diet because those can actually worsen someone's health. So in close, here's your recap. Thyroglobulin antibodies alone are not diagnostic. Pair with and or focus on TPO, thyroid receptor antibodies, and or ultrasound. Positive thyroglobulins can occur in autoimmunity, yes. In healthy individuals, yes. In nodule, goiter, and in cancer. And in terms of tracking forward in time, the thyroglobulin antibodies may have some benefit for tracking going forward in time, but be careful not to fall into the syndrome of treating the numbers and not the individual. Well, this is Dr. Michael Ruscio, and hopefully this helps you with better understanding thyroglobulin antibodies, how and when to use them, and also gives you a better representation of what having Hashimoto's um, means in terms of its predictive ability uh, regarding if you will become full-blown hypothyroid. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next time.